you will have a range of techniques that you will use on your route. Those are, you know, heels, drop knees, big wide moves, whatever they are. And from a physical point of view is that you can warm up. So the muscles, the joints, the range of movement, which is required for those particular techniques. So you allow yourself the greatest ability to be able to execute those techniques to the best possible um, sort of level of capacity that you have. Secondly, is that you will also, by warming up appropriately and exploring the full range of movement, hopefully reduce injury potential for on the route because injury risk does slowly increase as you start kind of increasingly hammering a route and keep them repetitively stressing the body in exactly the same way. Um, And also by doing that and preparing your the specifics of that kind of um, technique work, you'll it'll also improve that kind of mental game in terms of the sort of visualization, thinking through those moves that you're going to be doing. And that will really help uh, with the confidence as well. And then going to the physical side of things um, for the route, I think there's a certain aspect of the warm up that needs to be personalized or individualized to the demands of the route that you're doing. So a lot of mis- the mistake that I see a lot of people do in terms of warm up is that they carry out this sort of generic warm up that they've learned when they go down the gym or they copied from their friend. And this might not actually prepare your body specifically for what you're trying to do because I would argue that a warm up for a very short hard powerful route will look very different from something that's a huge long pumpy route for example a warm-up for a vert techie slab very different from a warm-up for a 45 to 80 degree roof on much bigger holds and is much more physical so really think about dialing down that warm-up so that it suits the demands of your route and i think that really increases the chance of success on it and another part of the kind of uh, physical equation I think makes a difference as well is getting climbers to understand that very high intensity uh, finger recruitment or forearm flexor recruitment as part of the warm-up so high intensity fingerboarding will often result in really good um, performance on the route as long as you're not pushing the fatigue envelope at all. How do we go from kind of generally warming up the body to then to your point, if there's heel hooks, if there's toe hooks, if there's kind of specific shouldery things to warming up on the ground, I'm assuming, as opposed to um, warming up on the route, or maybe it's a combination of both. Just how, how would you kind of take a look at that? Yeah. So the way that I would tend to address it is in an ideal world, actually being able to warm up on sections of the route is really, really good. Um, it depends on the steepness and the kind of logistics of being on a rope and working sections, because what you want, don't want to do is you don't want to develop too much fatigue, um, or potentially, um, damage to skin on the route. If the skin, like the roots harsh on skin, but being able to pull on to just individual moves, do one move or just maybe even two moves at a go and slowly work your way through that crux section, even if sometimes it's just holding the positions and creating tension between the hands and the feet, I think is a really good part of the warm up. Um, but I would say that that should be right at the end part of the warm up, just as you're thinking, right now I'm preparing the last sort of 15 to 30 minutes before I actually go on the red point. All right, y'all, just a quick 30 second shout out here for today's sponsor, which is the Crimped app. And I'm telling you, I love Crimped. Long before there is a YouTube channel, I was using Crimp to program my training because it takes the guesswork out of things. We're too busy to worry about this stuff. Open up Crimp. You can either load in a program like a sport plan or a boulder plan, or you can choose from the hundreds of exercises and protocols that they have in there to figure out your week. And at the end of each day and at the end of each week, you get to check them off. You know what's happening. You know what's coming. It will level up your training. I love it so much. Check it out. Hit that link. You can download it for free. All right, let's get back to the interview. But before that, the warm up in terms of moving from this generalized arm circling, doing some traversing, getting lightly warmed up, pumped, etc., it should be treated as essentially like a ramp test. So, for example, if you're going to go and do a route which is includes a sequence of six moves of V10 
bouldering in the middle of the crux, relatively low down, then you want your warm up to include increasingly hard bouldering that must more or less peak at a standard of V10, maybe even V11, maybe even V12 if you've got something mm. worked at the crag. And it has to look like that thing. You don't want to go and do a warm up to up to a couple of problems of V6 and then try and get pumped because it doesn't look like what you're trying to achieve. Likewise, if you're going to do a really long route and get really pumped and you want the blood supply network to be fully warmed up, you want all of the muscles in the body because it's going to be a bit more of a sort of a wrestling route and you're going to be on there using all the muscle groups and being up for longer then you want to have a much longer, higher duration warm-up, which does get you pretty pumped and um, is a lot longer in terms of the route that you do and a sort of moderate intensity, which means that you have to have much longer rests in that warm-up process leading up to the red point attempt. You know, how much is is feels right compared to what we might perceive as too much or too little? Mm, it is a really difficult question to uh, answer for any climber because a lot of the equation is dealt with by self-experimentation and will also change over the years depending on the tra- the amount of training volume that you do. Mm-hmm. So if you are a climber who typically struggles to hold down a lot of training volume and you haven't had a great deal of it in the cycle leading up to your red point project perhaps you're kind of arriving at the peak part of the season thinking oh, i just was really busy with work i didn't get as much done that i wanted to i could have done with a couple more days down the wall every single week then you will have to be quite a bit more careful with that warm-up in terms of the volume that you have and the sort of the fatigue element that goes in there but if you've put in a lot of volume into your training period and you're really well prepared i would say you can put a reasonable amount of proper warm-up volume you shouldn't be scared of that and in a way maybe what you're not tackling is the amount of rest that you need to have after the warm-up attempt don't expect to go and spend 15 minutes on a relatively hard warm-up route and get quite pumped and feel great after 15 minutes. You've got to be an absolute superstar to be doing that. That's more right. like what you do down the wall and you know doing short rests. But if you spend 45 minutes resting after that 15 attempt, maybe even an hour, and you're going and keeping warm and you're keeping prepared, then that's much more the kind of time window that you want you to be looking at it. And I think, I think I remember some Spanish climbers telling me that they looked at the ratio for when they would do something that would get them pumped, then they would try and rest at least five times the amount of time that they were on the route. So if they tried the route and it took them 10 minutes and they got pumped and they fell off or they got to the top, then it would be a 50 minute rest before they would have another attempt. Um, If you spent one hour on some massive stamina fest and you're on there forever, then yeah, intuitively, if you said an hour of effort and it was really hard, I think I would want maybe five hours, like half a day to go and eat some food, sit down, completely recover for it. And that feels about right. So somewhere around that, as the kind of ratio and i think yeah most people couldn't go too far wrong with saying that you also wouldn't want to do in your warm-up much more than maybe 20 percent of your normal workout volume within your warm-up any more than that i think you're definitely overcooking it